Combating the issue of a growing number of nationwide individuals committing welfare fraud has led to long-term imprisonment for those convicted, many including sole parents. We get about 2,000 tip-offs every week which require follow-up and investigation. Generally, people that are charged with what is known in the community as welfare fraud are charged under uh, Section 135.2 of the Commonwealth Criminal Act. It's where a person engages in conduct and as a result of that conduct obtains a financial advantage for themselves and they know or believe that they weren't entitled to receive the financial advantage. These are people that are trying to rip off the Australian taxpayer. People think ripping off Centrelink is an easy cop. But let me tell you, it's not a question of if you get caught, it's a question of when you get caught. I think we see a lot in the media about welfare fraud, um, but really sometimes people are inadvertently overpaid. So it can be that Centrelink might be 50% to blame, but the person wears the debt and also the potential for prosecution as well. Unfortunately in, in WA, it's very rare that you will get any legal assistance to defend a matter and so in most cases people um, just plead guilty to these offences without even understanding why they have the overpayment. From the perspective of disadvantage, we discuss the harsh reality behind what is becoming an extremely concerning problem for everybody involved. It is a fraud conviction and we quite often will see people whose employment prospects, you know, their current employment may be jeopardised because they've had a criminal offence. Um, similarly, we also see people, so people lose their job, it may prevent them from getting future employment, so it can potentially leave them on Centrelink payments for longer periods of time. And I think they often don't realise before they, they um, make errors or before they decide not to tell Centrelink, so they may have committed fraud, that it could have those kind of impacts. And when women go into jail, they may have young children that they're going to be separated from, um, and that's always distressing. You know, we've seen instances where people have gone to, to court and ended up in prison that day and haven't made arrangements for their children, so um, they haven't got an expectation that they'll be going to prison. What we as an organisation have worked on for many years is preventing debts, and that's not only good for the person that gets the debt, but it's good for the taxpayer because the last thing that taxpayers want is money being paid out incorrectly, whether through Centrelink's fault or the recipient's fault, and then having to go through this very costly process of trying to get the money back. But what preventative measures can Centrelink take to help combat these types of fraudulent activities? People could be asked to be checked more frequently in situations where they might be at risk of getting overpaid. People, for example, might have mental illness or substance abuse issues and so you know they might be at risk of not complying adequately with their obligations. Just doing regular checks on those people of, OK, come in and tell us about your circumstances or bring in your pay slips. Um, checking with employers. One of the difficulties is is that you know Centrelink refer cases to the Commonwealth DPP for prosecution um, and a decision is made by the Commonwealth DPP as to whether or not someone will be prosecuted. Often a client doesn't necessarily get to tell their story at that kind of starting point about the reasons why the debts occurred and don't necessarily have access to legal assistance. The Office of the Commonwealth Director of Public Prosecutions was contacted for an interview. We were provided this statement. A person will only be convicted if the court is satisfied beyond reasonable doubt that the person has committed the offence, including that at the time the person had the relevant criminal intent. The CDPP also determines if prosecution is in the public interest. Are convictions for defrauding the Commonwealth really sending out a clear warning that our community will not tolerate such crimes? Or is the stronger message here that families are being unfairly disintegrated under the current judicial system where severe penalties include long-term imprisonment? I'm Melissa Gurney for Undercurrent.